Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you so very much for joining us and our mission to help families grow closer through reading. We have a wonderful guest for you today, but before we introduce her, we want to encourage you to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app. Amazon Music, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is here to celebrate her debut middle grade novel. Her name is Jennifer Garrett, and she'll be telling us all about Brave Anna and the Star Compass. Hey, for all the authors that are listening out there, I wanted to share with you this great email that, that we received here at the Reading With Your Kids podcast from Dr. Linda Mubarak. She is the uh, a past guest and the author of Maxine's New Job. Here's the email. Dear Fatima and Jed, good news. Maxine's New Job has been nominated to receive the prestigious Henri Award at the 2018 Christian Literacy Awards for Outstanding Literacy Work in the Children's Book Division. I sincerely believe your certifying Maxine as a great read helped bring increased social media attention to the book. Thank you for the exposure and the great marketing. We are so happy for Dr. Linda Mubarak that her book, uh, Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, Maxine's New Job, received this prestigious recognition. We would love to help your book receive that same kind of recognition. If you are interested in having your book considered for our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program, please visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. You can click on the contact button, send us a, a, a note, and we'll send all the information back to you, or you can go right to our Certified Great Read page on our website. It's fun, it's easy, and it is really, really a, an effective way to let the world know that your book stands out above all the rest. The Reading with the Kids Certified Great Read Program. Joining us right now from central <laughs> Pennsylvania, beautiful part of the world. If you haven't been there, you should go once we can start traveling again. We're really excited. Our guest today, she's here to celebrate her debut middle grade novel. It's called Brave Anna and the Star Compass. Please welcome to the show, Jennifer Garrett. Jennifer, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. <laughs> I'm really excited to have you on the show. Jennifer was sharing that it's snowing right now outside of her home, and um, I'm, I'm afraid that means it's going to be snowing here in a few hours, but we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed, and we'll keep each other warm by talking about Brave Anna. Tell us about this novel, please. Wow. Um, where do I start? Uh, it's um, my debut book. Um, I started it many, many years ago. It actually... Um, started as a coping strategy for a really bad job. Um, so on my lunch breaks, I would go into this computer that was hidden in this little nook, and I would type away on my manuscript, and then I would go back to work. And that became one of the things I really looked forward to during the day because I really strongly disliked my job. We've all had a job that we really don't like that much. Um, and this was my job that I didn't like that much. So um, Anna actually came out of that. Uh, she... Um, was inspired by my niece, who was around the same age at that time. And so I just kind of took my niece and said, what what kind of adventures would she want to get up to? Um, they're kind of the same age, give them the same personality. Um, what's, what is something that's going to inspire a 12-year-old? And that's really how Anna came about. Wow. I, yeah. I, I, I have to ask, you don't have to name names, and you, and you can pass, but I... <laughs> What were you doing that you hated so much that, that inspired you to write a book? So the work itself wasn't that bad. I was working with children that had um, developmental disabilities. Um, that part of my job I loved. It was the management that was really bad. Um, and these were people that didn't have experience working with children, and I did. Um, and so there was kind of creative differences there. But, um yeah, like I said, on my lunch break every day, I'd go hole up in that little office and type away, and eventually it came together and became Brave Anna and the Star Compass. Wow. I, I <laughs> You know, I certainly can relate. I think all of us have had a job that they didn't that they didn't like, um, 
and, and most of the time it was the fact that they didn't like the management because it didn't seem like they were doing knowing what they were doing. I, I'm wondering again, without naming any names, um, <laughs> did did the people who were making your life miserable in that role did 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 they inspire any villains that we're going to encounter in the book? <laughs> Now that you mention it, I'm wondering if maybe subconsciously I did. Um, there is a villain in Brave Anna and the Star Compass, and he is quite difficult to get along with. Um, so maybe. I guess the answer to your question would be maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about Brave Anna. It's uh, inspired by your niece. I have a... A niece that I've mentioned on the show many times, she is amazing and inspires me in so many different ways. Um, uh, tell us uh, 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 about about her and uh, and about this character that that she inspired you to create. So my niece is a little Spitfire. Um, back then, she was very um, outspoken. She was very, um, you know, confident in what she wanted. But she also had some issues that children of her age struggle with, and that has a lot to do with anxiety, um, lacking self-confidence, not knowing who you are, trying to find out what your purpose is in this world. So I took all of those age-related problems and gave them to my storybook character, Anna. So um, I kind of took the age-related problems that my niece was experiencing and infused them into Anna so that she would be somebody who was relatable, um, but who could also triumph over these problems. So they share personalities, they share complications and problems, uh, but most importantly, they are triumphant in the end. Um, Both experience um, triumphs and accomplishments and achievements that come from persevering, really. so yeah, yeah, Anna is a reflection of my niece and vice versa. You know that that anxiety that that you expressed that that your niece and Anna had about not knowing who they truly are. Mhm. That's something I think a lot of us with with kids in that middle grade age group uh see. And one of the things that that uh and it was especially true with my son when he was that age. And and one of the things that I noticed was that all of his buddies seemed to have the same struggle. And the biggest struggle was that that on top of not knowing who they were, they they were under the impression that all their friends knew who they were. They they, they right. they're like all the everybody's figured this out except for me. <laughs> yes. And I remember one time talking with a group of kids that age and they were kind of frustrating and, and me just saying, look, all you guys are afraid that, 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 that you're the only one who doesn't know what's going on. And I got to tell you, none of you know what go, what's going on. <laughs> so just, just chill, support each other that and help so each other figure it out. Yes, absolutely. And my background is actually in psychology. So I kind of took those um, kind of age-related crises where we try to figure out what we're doing here, um, what is our purpose, what am I supposed to be doing, and put them into the book so that hopefully people who read that will say, oh, it's okay to not know who I am and what I'm doing here. This person here, you know, is struggling with that as well, and it's okay for me to struggle. And I hope that helps readers understand it will happen eventually you'll know eventually but you know for now just kind of take it easy on yourself it's interesting and and i i don't mean to be argumentative it this just thought just <laughs> occurred to me um yeah. you know we we're, we're, we're you know encouraging kids to find out who it is they're supposed to be and that's a great thing and, and it is when a kid finally says this is the direction that i want to go in and it's wonderful uh, and a lot of people get locked in, and it's like, yes, uh, this is the direction I need to be going in, and this is who I am. This is this is how my life is defined. And now, granted, this is a once in a in a century situation, but a lot right. of people who had that definition of themselves that got shattered when the lockdown happened. I mean, myself, I for thirty years I was traveling the country, very often traveling through Pennsylvania entertaining mm-hmm. kids, inspiring kids with my educational magic show, that disappeared overnight when the pandemic hit. 
And, right. you know, is, is there a need for us once we find ourselves and find our direction, do, you also, do we also need to find a way to be kind of flexible and, and, and tell ourselves, hey, it's okay if things change and I can change too? Yes, absolutely. Um, from a psychological perspective, I think people on a whole feel safer when they have a plan and they know what they're doing. But COVID has really shown us that those plans can go away with a moment's notice. And I know that that's been really difficult on our young people. So, yes, I, I would completely agree with what you said in terms of flexibility. It's so nice to have a plan to know what you want to do and to have that plan manifest. But now is the time to be flexible. Now is the time to say, my plans have changed and I might be okay with that. Um, you know, COVID has uh, done so many things. I mean, our, our uh, Gettysburg reenactment last summer was canceled. That's a huge deal for people around here. 40,000 people go there every year. Um, you know, it, it's important to say, yes, I'm upset. I'm grieving. I'm mourning that I've lost these opportunities. But in the moment, I'm going to be flexible. I'm going to try to do the best I can now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's all we can really hope from anybody at this point. Yeah. You know, getting back to Brave Anna and the Star Compass, one of the things that we love to celebrate here on the show, of course, we love it when kids are able to read on their own and they've developed a love of reading um, and, and a love of story, but we also really encourage our families to continue to read and co-read with their kids as they become independent readers, as they get older. What mm-hmm. what kind of conversations can a family have in in the minivan on the way to school or dance if they're co-reading Brave Anna and the Star Compass together? So I actually just got a review um, from a father who read Brave Anna to his daughter, and they worked through it together. And in fact, for some of the younger readers, that's what I would recommend. Um, Some of the themes in Anna are complex, depending on the age of the reader. And there are times in the book that a parent might find themselves wanting to explain things to their child, maybe why certain things happen, why certain people act the way they do. It's definitely something um, designed to have a parent read to a child so that they can work through these messages together. Mm -hmm. I can definitely see readers having questions, and I think parents are fantastic at answering those questions and giving their children as much information as possible to understand something that might be a little too complex for them. So I can I can see them talking about Anna's journey, the friends she makes along the way, why some of her friends act the way that they do, why they do the things that they do, definitely trying to understand things a little bit better, but from a stance where you can do it together. You know, you bring up a good point about understanding uh, why our friends act in, in certain ways. Uh, it's it's great for a kid to be able to have somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of and, and, and like, oh, man, my friend Jennifer, she was so cool, but wow, she just did this thing, and I don't know why she did that. I mean, it's great for us as adults to be able to have somebody to talk about because sometimes our adult friends are – less than perfect and, yeah. and and do things that boggle our mind For, as somebody who has a lot of experience working with kids um mm-hmm. how important is that to be able to uh have a relationship with your kids where they feel comfortable coming to you and saying jennifer did this bobby did that and it it it, it makes me crazy that's so important um But in COVID times, it's ever more difficult for parents to be that accessible for their children because we're all under (laughs) so much stress. Um, Yes, it's definitely important for a parent to be approachable. Um, I think you want to be the kind of person that your child brings these complex world questions to. You want to kind of control the narrative that they're hearing, not necessarily from a point of being suffocating, um, but because you can deliver some difficult messages with a little bit of compassion. You know, this is this is your child. He or she is asking you a question about why a friend did this thing. And it's up to you to explain that in a way that not only does that child understand, but that they go back out into the world with this knowledge that they're better able to deal with that situation in the future. Yeah. So, yeah, parents are important for so many reasons. And for being that contact that person that answers those questions and that your child comes to to talk to, that is so important. Yeah. yeah. Very important. 
and I guess it's too, it's important too just to be able to sit down and say to your kids, boy, I don't know why Bobby did that to you. Sometimes, sometimes our friends just act like jerks and, and we, we, and it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be sad about that. Mm-hmm, absolutely. It's definitely okay to feel those feelings. Please feel those feelings and let's talk about them so that you know what it feels like mm-hmm. and you can deal with it in the future. Yeah. So you, this, this book was, you know, kind of conceived in frustration and anger. And um, what, what pushed you after you left that job and you didn't need to go into that, 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 that secret spot to, to write a you know, to write away your anger about your bosses. Um, what inspired you to continue writing the story? So it's kind of a funny story. I, I left that job, and when I did, I emailed all of my files to myself. And years later, um, I came across Willow Moon. Uh, I think they posted on Facebook, and I saw one of their ads and looked into it. You know, it's a woman owned company, they have a ton of titles. Let me see if I can dig up this old manuscript that I was working on years upon years ago and work on it a little bit and see if it's something that they'd be interested in. And sure enough, it was. And when I submitted my manuscript to Willow Moon, I only had about 60 pages done. So once, once Jody said, we would love to get our hands on this, that was enough motivation for me. I finished, I think in the next couple of months and then submitted it. Right. And, and the rest is history. And the Jody that Jennifer is referring to is Jody Staple, who's been a guest on the show. Yes. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, I, I, I just, I love how dedicated she is to us and she offers so many different types of books. Like she has a cupcake book, but then you also have Brave Anne and the Star Compass. And then you also have other authors who do picture books, plays, all types of things. It's definitely a very talented group of people. What's been the most surprising thing to have happened to you or, or most surprising knowledge that you've gained since you became a published author? I can definitely say the most surprising thing is the interest. I had no idea that anybody would care about this book. <laughs> and being somebody who um, kind of shies away from pu- publicity, um, who's a little bit more of an introvert, that was surprising. Um, I have a ton of interest in my local communities. People are reaching out to me about doing workshops. They want me to come and talk to their class. And I'm, I'm completely flabbergasted um, by the attention. I love it. It's great. I'm so happy that people um, are finding this book something good to read. Um, but I never expected <laughs> the fame, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I was living pretty quietly in COVID times. And then all of a sudden it kind of blew up. So um, it's nice. It's a good surprise, but it's definitely a surprise. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so the reviews have been pretty positive. You mentioned that a dad reached out to you and said that, that he was reading this with, with his child. What other kind yeah. of, what other kind of responses have you had? I've had a lot of people say that they, they like Anna a lot, that they find her relatable. There are several times throughout the story where she just kind of has moments where she is, getting down on herself. She's doubting her abilities. You know, why, why was I made the person um, to go on this journey? Why didn't somebody braver or stronger do it? I'm just a a little girl. You know, I have these problems. Why me? And I think a lot of people relate to that level of self-doubt, especially in that age group. I mean, self-doubt is a huge deal Mm -hmm. for readers that age. And people have reached out to me. Oh my gosh, I've I've had the same experience as Anna has had, uh, in terms of questioning why me. You know, I can't do this. Um, and I hope people read that and realize that they can do it. Yeah. That they find Anna relatable to the point where they go out and do that difficult thing and they succeed. So that's tell, the point. Yeah. So tell me uh, about your niece. Is she aware that she is the inspiration <laughs> for for the hero of the story? And and how does she feel about it? She's definitely aware. She um, is actually a part of the dedication. So I thanked her for being the inspiration. Um, She, I think, like me, is kind of puzzled by the attention. She, um, like me, I don't think expected it to be as popular as it is, but I think she enjoys it a little bit. She is a teenager after all, so I think that she does like that attention a little bit. Excellent. 
So your debut book is here. People are loving Brave Anna and the Star Compass. Have you caught the writing bug? Is this one and done, or are there going to be more books coming from our friend Jennifer Garrett? I have a couple of projects in the works, um, but I am a relatively new mom. Um, Congratulations. I ha- thank you. I have an eight-month-old um, who's teething and crawling and talking and doing all of these fun things. So I haven't really been working on anything recently, but I do have some stuff kind of in the background waiting. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, but I have to correct you. You said you haven't been working on anything lately. <laughs> yeah. You may not have been working on any any manuscript, but you certainly have been working since, <laughs> since the baby arrived. That is so accurate. Um, taking care and raising a child is so much work. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's so fun and, um, it's time consuming. So I don't really get to do a whole lot of the things I used to do. Um, but I will again someday. And my works in project and in process are, uh, saved on my computer, just waiting for me to come back. Excellent. So yeah, Excellent. we'll get there someday. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm flashing back to when my son was born 28 years ago. And, um, uh, I think when he was, uh, he's about eight. Eight weeks, maybe maybe twelve weeks. Um, I had a tour lined up through the uh, m- amazing metropolis of Ebensburg in Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. Oh wow! In Western okay. Pennsylvania. My wife decided, well, let's go. We'll make it a family of uh, outing, and so we went down. Uh, my uh, our son, my son came with us. My beautiful wife came with us, and and I was touring around and. Evansburg is a lovely community. There's just nothing to do there. And that was perfect because it just meant that I, we could stay in the hotel and just play with our son. And it was amazing. That sounds amazing. Um, sometimes when you don't have anything to do, that's the best time to really connect with your people. We actually just had COVID uh, about a month ago, a little bit more than a month ago. And my, my son, who's eight months, brought it home. And we all got COVID and we were all quarantined in the house together for three weeks. Um, And so the silver lining of that is exactly what you just said. Sometimes when you can't do anything else, you got to slow down and really just spend time with, with your family. And that's just, you know, irreplaceable. That time is irreplaceable. Well, we're really thankful that you're all okay. And, and, and and there are going to be brighter days coming and we're all getting through this together and the light is the lights I, I think i see the light at the end of the tunnel so we're really excited about that <laughs> good and we're really <laughs> excited about brave anna and the star compass jennifer tell everybody where they can go to connect with you and find out more about your book yes definitely i have an author page on facebook uh jennifer garrett author is is the the way to find that um, I also have a website where you can reach me and contact me if anybody's interested in talking to me about opportunities, um, buying the book, whatever questions there might be. Um, it's available everywhere, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I, I'm pretty sure it's on Target still. Uh, Walmart, it's definitely there. So it's pretty accessible and pretty out there if you want to get your hands on a copy. Excellent. We've been having a great time speaking to the author of Brave Anna and the Star Compass, the debut middle grade novel by our guest, Jennifer Garrett. Jennifer, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Really looking forward to welcoming Stephen Craster to the podcast. He is the author of Why Not Call It Cow Juice and How Nice, Have a Nice Nap, Humphrey. He's also the uh, sports writer and covered the Boston Red Sox for many years for the Providence Journal. He tells us all about how we can encourage our kids' imagination and help them discover their voice through writing and other forms of expression. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Earlier on, you heard us read a letter from Dr. Linda Mubarak about our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program. It is a wonderful program that has helped so many authors uh, get the attention or help their books get the attention they deserve. You know, being an author is so difficult under the best of circumstances. It's even harder now during the pandemic. 
it's so hard for your book to stand out. There are literally thousands of books that are published every single month. The Reading with Your Kids Certified Great Read Program can really help your book stand out. Let parents know that your book is worthy of their consideration. You can find out more by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Jennifer Garrett. Be sure to check out Brave Anna and the Star Compass. Also want to thank my team, Alondra Doherty, Fatima Khan, our amazing interns, Hannah Pat Oboisky, Alexia Brown. Also want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.